Hey guys, AMH Knives here. Today I'm going to talk about my mill setup and use it in the new Centroid CNC Acorn control board and software to run the machine. So let's get started. This is, used to be an X2 mini mill, the uh, small bench top size. Um, over the years it's been upgraded and changed and a few things have become majorly apparent that it's not the same. Um, it now runs um, two Y bases that have been cut, welded together, and they've been surface ground so they're perfectly flat. Table is an aftermarket from Grizzly for a different bench top. It's a 22 inch table by six and a quarter, a lot bigger. Um, and the movements on the machine have gotten a lot bigger. You go from like eight inches of movement for your X and uh, around like four and a half, I think it was for the Y. Uh, I go, now I run 16 inches on my X and 10 and a half on the Y, nine on the Z. Z axis is a three horsepower water cooled spindle. Um, just one of your Chinese router, 8,000 to 24,000 RPM spindles. Um, it has clear path servos, off all, all three axes. They're the um, NEMA 23s, the 6400 bit encoders, and they are the 620 inch ounce output power for them. Um, I also am running. Um, home shop CNC ball screws C7s um, right now I do have NSK C5s which will eventually be upgraded into the machine but that's what I had at the time um, besides that it's a it's got a big Kurt it is a I got notes because I can't remember all this stuff it's a DL430 dual head vise with a set of 4 inch carve smarts on it as well I'm also running a Renshaw it is a TS27R tool setter and an LP2 probe as well for my probing, tool setting, offsetting setup for the machine. The whole machine is running on high wind linear rails. Got rid of all the dovetails. Didn't want to deal with any of the issues I was having with those. Um, so it's much smoother, it's faster. I can run this machine at um, 300 inches a minute right now. Um, once I switch to the NSKs, I could go all the way to 800 inches a minute. I'm more worried about the machine flying out of the enclosure than anything else. So probably keep it scaled down to about 300. Um, big thing with the machine was control. I had huge problems getting the controls to work with the clear pass, with the probe, with the tool setter. All those different things to talk to one another was not happening. Um, I originally had, on the original machine, I was running steppers and a little Gecko G540 board. That worked fine at the time, running Mach 3, losing steps, having issues cutting the knives correctly. So I moved up to the setup that you see now. So I switched to, originally I had a CNC4 PC board, the C62 board. Installed that, spent weeks getting the wiring having issues can't get the servos to start having issues Mach 3 is not communicating tons of issues uh, biggest problem was that the board the surface mount caps the diodes pretty much everything had bad solder bad joints no conductivity just didn't work ended up sending it back got rid of that switched <laughs> 
to a CS Labs Cosmo IPS board. It was supposed to be an industrial controller, yada, yada, yada. Did get the machine to start up, the machine to run, still using Mach 3, which it's old, it's tired. Mach 4 really doesn't work either. I haven't been a big fan of it. Um, so I got that running, got the machine running pretty happy it took a year this is a year project and uh, as soon as you would touch the part and then go touch the tool probe so you can set your offset so you can set your tools it would fall out EPID failure every time spoke to the company told me to use a Mach 3 soft point oh two two was the software version they wanted me to use which is almost 10 years old uh, I went I even tried, I tried using it, I tried using version 62, version 66, I even tried using Mach 4, and it would not work right. It, it, every time I'd get the failures, the machine would lock up, I'd have to reset, and I was up the creek. So, I was at my wit's end, and I had shot an email to a company called Centroid. I knew they made big industrial controllers for, you know, the Haases, um more Seckies, a bunch of different companies you could you could retrofit a new controller to an older machine and keep it going rather than have to deal with you know you only got a certain very limited amount of megabytes that you can use for your g-code and you can only run you know thousand lines or something crazy it wasn't that low but uh, pretty low um, and you could upgrade to their software and run as many lines as humanly possible so I shot them an email just saying, hey, what is your big controller and can I put it on this little machine? Um, and they sent me an email within, I mean, it was like three hours on a Sunday. And it stated that they had come out with a new board. It's called the Acorn board. And they were doing beta testing on it. Hadn't come out yet. And they would like me to try it. I was like, sure. I'm, I'm at my wit's end. Machine's taken a year, countless amounts of money. I need this thing running so I can start making knives again. And uh, they shot it out to me. I'm in Jersey. They're in PA. And they shot it out in a day. Had it here. That night, had it wired up. Two days over Skype, getting it set up. Machine's up and running. Uh, it's phenomenal. The software is insane. You got tons of features with it. It's all touch screen. Uh, all the probing features you could ever want. Uh, part setup, tool offsets. Um, this the board has setups for running flood, mist, um, loop systems, running your VFDs. Um, works with the clear paths, uh, limits for her homing and auxiliary limits, everything. And uh, so I gave it a shot. It's in the machine, and it works phenomenally. I can do anything I want. And I use uh, Fusion 360 for my CAD CAM, and their G code output for Centroid, perfect. I don't have any issues. It fires right up, it loads it, and it goes. Um, the biggest thing with it is the ease that it uses. So I load the code, it tells me will it fit, it's not going to ruin any parts as far as uh, going outside limits or crashing the machine, and you hit go. Machine does its thing. You set all your tool set offsets, set your tools. Every time my tool change goes over, touch the tool setter, and you're ready to rip. Um, I'll move the camera here, and I'll show you a little bit of the inside of the software. We'll go into it further in maybe another video um, with the probing features and that sort of thing, but I'll just give you a basic on what the screens have, what the so different you can see here for. is uh, I've started the software. You hit cycle start when you start. It homes all the machine out so you have your automatic zero. This is where I was last in the machine. But everything's touch screen so you can go into your setups. You can change all your parts, all the different probing features it has. Um, you can also go into your tools. You can do your, all your offset libraries. You can manually measure it. You can auto measure it. You can do your references. Everything's not a problem configurations you can go in you can change how your controls work your speed of your spindle your homing switches you can also do all of your 
your jogging speeds, feeds, all your motor setups, your different homes, your scales, PID you can go in, you can change um, everything under the sun if you have that. Um, you can go in and do your manual uh, MID lines, run, they even have cam, they have canned um, software features, I'm not going to go into that deep. Um, you also have uh, graphs that can show you in 2D and in 3D how it's going to cut your different parts, which is cutting out uh, little test blocks, make sure the machine's correct. Um, you can even digitize. You can put a part in the machine, and when you set it up and the probe goes around, it can tell you in relation where everything is, and you can um, use it to just immediately copy another part on the machine with this program or you can send it to CAD and then you can adjust uh, the part however is needed um, with it um, and everything's touch so you can move the machine just by touching move all your feeds everything you have your spindle you can set up auxiliary buttons um, just basically it does everything you would need there's no um, needing different little macros to do your probing or to do your part setup or uh, adjusting your cam because it doesn't match the post processor to run um, with this software so basically they've made it um, the most user friendly software I've ever had tenfold better than Mach 3 you can even do uh, all your backlash comp, ball screw mapping um, and get your machine just right on the money with this software um, so it's just tenfold better anything I've seen out there and works flawlessly. Right, so here's my uh, electrical cabinet housing the acorn board you see in the center. I uh, also have a Renshaw MI8 which is running my tool setter and tool probe. The two Amazon IPC5s are the power supplies for the clear pass servos. Also have the uh, a 12 volt or a 24 volt power source cooling fans um, all my 24 volt extra wiring is on the side there um, basically the acorn has you know top inputs are your clear pass in the center left hand side is your you know your probe VFD uh, tool setter down the left hand side you have your all your your power input your home your e-stop all your limits bottom you have your 10 0 to 10 volts for the VFD itself and your power inputs and then the uh, right hand side you have well I have VFD hooked up for you know your common your for reverse um, you can also that side has the relays for your coolant for your flood for your mist for your uh, lubing system and anything like that and it all fits on that nice little board you have your single uh, RJ45 jack for, that goes straight to the computer and you're off and running uh, it also has uh, ports for uh, spindle encoder for rigid tapping and the other port is an output so you can hook it directly to a G540 gecko driver and you'd be off and running if you had one of those if you were still running steppers so just a little bit into my uh, electrical cabinet this machine runs off of.